I used to be a Freemason, and a lot of Freemasons have said that the best day of their life was the day they became a Freemason, the day they were called brother. Well, I thought I'd describe this day, give you a little detail. Let's talk about it. So first, you're invited into the lodge, and they bring you into a special room where they're asked, where you're asked to put on some special clothing. Mine were about 50-year-old uh, kind of pajamas, um, almost like medical scrubs. Uh, so they prepare you. So in preparation for this, you put on those clothing. Your left breast is exposed. Your uh, leg, one leg is actually exposed. You have one shoe on. And right before they bring you into the main Masonic alt or Masonic uh, area, the lodge room, they put a blindfold on you. Then they put a noose around your neck. And yeah, you should be a little freaked out, but you're like, well, these are good Christian men. They should be able to, you know, they sh they have they. It's going to be okay. So then, when you open up the door, you're let in. And a dagger pokes you in that naked left breast. And you're warned that the pain that you felt when the dagger touched your left breast was to remind you of the pain that would happen to you if you revealed anything you saw in this room. Once again, these are good Christian guys doing this. Yeah. So then you're walked around the lodge. And uh, they go through a bunch of like a like a ritual prayer from the Old Testament, by the way, no New Testament. And then you're presented at the altar. Uh, that altar is right uh, behind me here in this picture where you uh, basically are introduced to the lodge and you then give your Freemason oath. So or obligation. So. The first part of the obligation seems pretty normal. It says, in my own free will in accord, in the presence of God, in this worshipful lodge, erected to him and dedicated to the holy saints John. You do, I do hereby solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will always hail, ever conceal, and never reveal any parts of Freemasonry. Then, at the end, you bind yourself under an obligation. So you swear an oath obligating yourself under no less a penalty than having your throat cut across, the Freemasons ripping your tongue out by its roots, and your body buried in the rough sands of the sea where the tide ebbs and flows twice in 24 hours. That you steadfastly and sincerely promise and swear in the name of God. Now, I was kind of lost back then, and, you know, I thought, all these guys are good Christian guys. No harm's going to be done to me. And, you know, I'm standing here right now. No harm's done to me. But, you know, this is not what normal people do, period. Good Christian men don't threaten men with, cutting their tongues out. They don't put nooses around people's necks. Nothing good happens blindfolded. And, you know, if you're a Christian, you should be a light on a hill, not being hidden under a web of secrecy. So that's basically that first experience of a Masonic Lodge. And to this day, I can't tell you why I came back and became a fellow craft. But I was just brainwashed into believing, you know, this is just uh, just symbolic. It's a ritual. You're going to learn more. Don't worry about it. We're good guys. Well, good guys don't do that to good guys.